Thank you very much. Good morning. Um, uh, the paper I am presenting has been funded by the expert group of A studies in Sweden and also in collaboration with WIDER, so I'm very pleased to be here to present the preliminary results. Yeah, so um, just, well, just to give you um, an example of how the social protection system today has been expanding over the last decades. Um, uh, well, as you can see from the graph, um, in the early 2000s where we started to collect data, <clears throat> reflect a substantial increase in not only in the number of programs, but also by type of different programs they have expanded substantially, which also reflect different choices by countries um, and dependent on different factors. So uh, one of the interesting things here is that uh, specific types of programs have been dominant in the expansion of social protection uh, in, in the global south. And here when I talk about social protection, I refer in particular to social assistance, uh, where this is, uh, we are focusing on this because among welfare institutions, we find that uh, social assistance has been much more dynamic than other types of programs like social insurance or labor market policies. So therefore, the discussion of today will be focusing on social assistance in particular. Um, however, if you look at the distribution of coverage across uh, regions, you can see a substantial difference. Uh, and in, and inequality in terms of coverage. If you look at this table, the colors will give you a hint of the distribution of coverage, moving from dark blue, uh, dark green to dark red, uh, with dark green uh, showing uh, a higher share of the population covered by specific types of programs and by different types of vulnerable populations. And this um, uh, dynamics and also this distributional uh, uh, characteristics of the expansion also again reflects a lot of policy choices. Um, so um, the paper's contribution is uh, trying to understand the contribution of uh, foreign aid in this expansion that I show you. No? So uh, we um, want to understand the extent to which, in particular, foreign aid has uh, contributed to the development of these systems in low-income uh, countries. And also we want to understand the conditions that explain those dynamics and also the actors and what kind of other factors have been supporting or hindering this expansion. So uh, in order to do that, we do a quantitative analysis and also we look at uh, aid flows in detail and also try to understand what is behind all those uh, patterns that we observe in the data. Um, and the reason why we try to do this is because, uh, well, at the moment, they are, the literature is very, very scant. Most of the studies uh, focus on specific cases. There are very few studies using econometric analysis trying to somehow identify the relationship between expansion of these systems and the role of external actors. There are also interesting studies uh, using qualitative methodologies, but again, uh, there are different challenges from the, the, both type of uh, studies. Uh, from the quantitative side, many of the studies uh, don't go as far as trying at least to establish some kind of causal relationship, whereas in qualitative studies also they face obviously a trade-off between identifying the, the, the process of tracing the channels and the mechanisms and also uh, looking at different cases. And also, overall, so we are trying to contribute to this uh, scant literature. So, uh, overall, what we can say is the, the, the literature highlights uh, certain patterns that uh, highlight the way donors uh, have contributed to the expansion of certain types of programs, in particular the World Bank and other agencies uh, have been playing a role. Again, um, some of these uh, evidence is more uh, anecdotal or based on certain methodologies that uh, we are not sure how to, or the extent to which we can claim some kind of generalizations. So 
Um, some of the studies also highlight a number of determinants, and we exploit the, the information that the, the, that the literature uh, highlights. It's also to control for specific dimensions that are reported to affect it or have been influencing the expansion of social protection in, in the global south. And these are related to historical legacies, for example, path dependency, the role of institutions, in particular democracy is highlighted, uh, the role of demographic dynamics, for example, in the southern part of Africa, as HIV, whereas in other uh, latitudes, there are other factors that also relate to demo demo uh, demographics that explain policy choices, the role of ideas, and obviously cover shocks, no? In Latin America, for example, financial crisis were determined in making certain decisions back in the late 1990s. And also those kind of factors uh, are control in our specifications. Right, so one of the things that um, we obviously um, came when we were doing the analysis, how we measure uh, aid to social protection. So we have two definitions overall. Uh, one we call the narrow definition that contains this type of activities covered by foreign aid. And then we use a broader definition that also covers activities that relate to, for example, labor markets, uh, policies, or for example, uh, social dialogue, which uh, can be, according to some hypothesis, relevant. So, no? so we include two definitions for measuring social protection aid. And overall, the, the historical trends based on the existing evidence or the existing data shows this kind of pattern. Um, as you can see, the uh, aid flows towards the support of social protection through the, the activities that I just showed you have overall captured about 2% of uh, foreign aid historically, which is a very small percentage of foreign aid. Um, what is interesting here is to see how different types of donors, either uh, multilateral or bilateral, uh, show different patterns and also different uh, levels of, of contribution to this uh, type of flows. So we also exploit this information in the analysis to show how different types of donors have been um, actively involved in the, in the provision of aid. And you can see, for example, on this, uh, on this graph that uh, global aid, which global means total aid, multilaterals, uh, bilaterals, plus DAC countries and non-DAC countries aid, uh, are dominant by multilateral. So about two thirds of foreign aid is channeled via multilaterals to this sector which is a quite distinct in relation to other sectors of activity. If you look at total development aid, bilaterals are much more dominant, whereas in social protection, multilaterals have been taking a much active role. And also, you can see the, these spikes, <clears throat> one in the late 1990s, another one around 2008, which also shows how multilateral aid responds to shocks. You know, the last big spike reflects the financial crisis of 2008, no? so, which also shows how these systems can act as countercyclical measures in types of uh, financial crisis. So uh, if you look at the type of uh, uh, instruments or type of finance, you can also see substantial differences. So bilaterals rely heavily on grants, whereas uh, multilaterals uh, rely on debt instruments, uh, which also can work through different channels, can be uh, conditionalities, and also through a specific type of conditions uh, that shape the, this, this kind of programs. And all this information is important for the econometrics. That's why I am giving you this, this, um, this uh, overview of data. And also one other, other thing that's very interesting is that um, Latin America has, has quite uh, dominated aid flows over the last decades. And Sub-Saharan Africa, in particular, has been increasing just recently after 2010. Uh, and this also uh, reflects the new uh, priorities of donor countries in terms of aid allocations more recently. So I will not spend much time on the methodology. All the details of the methodology are in the paper, but I just want to say that what we do is try to capture 
Uh, the, the very complex dynamics of these relationships, and we implement uh, a number of approaches to, ca to try to at least address the issue of endogeneity of, of, of aid in, in this context. In, in, we are trying to capture the expansion by measuring coverage of the population in each country. And we use certain models that reflect, as you remember, the distribution of coverage in the early days Try, usually is trend or is uh, close to zero, no? and therefore the distribution of coverage is, is um, uh, censored towards zero. That's why we use these particular econometric approaches. Uh, we also use uh, some uh, additional approaches, the fractional response models, which in a way also capture better uh, the fact that programs uh, or the coverage is, rela is related to the, the, uh, the size of the population, and also this is our preferred model for the estimates. But nevertheless, I, um, one of the things that I just want to briefly mention is uh, the, the instruments that we use, uh, uh, we rely on some set of instruments that we have used in the past, and uh, I can uh, discuss in more detail the rationale behind those, those uh, instruments, but overall try to capture uh, some exogenous variation, in particular in donor countries, and also uh, try to uh, capture policy choices according to the constitution of the, uh, the, the, um, the way parliaments and governments are instructor or organize in, in donor countries. And I can go and talk about this in more detail, but um, I will skip this. Uh, I, I want to just go to the results. And one of the um, well, interesting things that we find is across the board, we implemented several models trying to control for multiple factors to reduce the problem of omitted variable bias. And also uh, after controlling for the endogeneity of aid, um, we conducted some tests, and well, you know, the, the, always instrumental variables are controversial, so whether you believe in instruments or not, but nevertheless, even assuming at the level of correlation, um, we find a very strong association in the contribution of foreign aid to, to the expansion of social protection uh, across uh, low and middle income countries. We look at different types of of uh, donors, um, but overall um, the, the effect is about, well, these are elasticities based on the fractional response models, uh, so in a way 1% increase in, in foreign aid leads to an increase about 0.25 percentage points of, of coverage, <clears throat> so which in many contexts is non-eligible. Um, so also we find some interesting variation across world countries, uh, world uh, regions. So what we find is that a, in particular in Sub-Saharan Africa, the, f the, the effects are driven by multilaterals, as you can see um, in, the, in that top uh, graph, <clears throat> uh, which essentially shows points and estimates. And once you cross the, the uh, the, the line, you see a significant effects uh, at 90% levels. So, uh, so, so the, the, one of the important things is that what we observe in the data is somehow reflecting also in the graphs that multilaterals, in particular Sub-Saharan Africa, have been the main actors driving these, these effects. Um, and obviously, um, uh, when we look at other type of program uh, donors, um, there are a few issues, you know, the confidence intervals are too big, so we have less certainty about the, the accuracy of the effects. But nevertheless, um, we can see that the, these actors have been playing a, a significant role in the expansion of these uh, institutions in, in, in different parts of the world. So to give you a sense of how we can interpret these uh, point estimates, um, so let's say if we take the case of e e Ethiopia, you know, um, we can think that one um, a percentage increase in, in foreign aid um, will, uh, oh, going from an average of $253 uh, million, which is the average that Ethiopia received in the last five uh, years, will have an effect 
uh, in the coverage of about 260,000 people covered by this kind of system from a baseline of about 7.8 million people who are covered by these kind of programs in, in that country. So these are not negligible uh, effects and actually show the way uh, it has been contributed to the, to the coverage of vulnerable populations. But also what we observe is that there is a quite significant inequality, let's say, in terms of the way uh, donors allocate resources regardless of the level of poverty or the level of vulnerability among countries within those regions. So certain countries receive far less, for example, assistance regardless of whether they have lower or higher income per capita. No? So, and this also reflects policy choices in donor countries and also reflect political economy factors that we also explore in the models. Um, so we, as I said, we explore and test different theoretical predictions about the factors that influence those systems, and we cover overall dimensions that are grouped into these kind of uh, areas. And overall, we find uh, interesting information that, again, in, it's in the paper. I just give you here a very quick uh, uh, overview of what we find, but overall, in just going to the conclusions, um, we find um, obviously that uh, the data suggests that there is a, a significant effect of aid, in, particularly in these kind of sectors, and we don't find any evidence of detrimental impacts of aid. Uh, there may be situations in, in which, for example, competing uh, policy choices may uh, uh, influence the way these policies or these programs or systems have been taking uh, shape, but overall, um, um, we find some positive uh, evidence about this relationship. The fact that 66% of these flows to South Saharan Africa in particular have been channeled uh, via multilaterals and also uh, in, uh, through debt instruments, which is important, no? he, uh, in a way underscores the way governments have been uh, taking play, uh, getting involved in the expansion of the systems vis-a-vis -vis what we observed in the early years, which I think is, is, is a positive signal. And also, uh, we find that also uh, bilaterals rely heavily on certain types of modalities that uh, although reflect the complexities of working in this area, because gradually countries have been moving to fragile states and it's more difficult to work with autocratic regimes. Also, there's the issue of state capacity and also state building in terms of helping mobilize resources. Um, so uh, there are um, obviously certain aspects um, that have been uh, influencing the expansion of these programs, but also um, we find that there is no sufficient uh, a connection between the contribution of aid and also the extent to, to which uh, tax collection systems have been evolving to finance those uh, those resources that are needed to continue sustaining this this program. So this is one of the areas where we think that. Uh, based on the data, there is a need to, to increase uh, aid allocations to improve uh, tax collection uh, systems in those countries. So, well, uh, thank you very much. <laughs>